I would like to discuss now some basic issues when it comes to interpreting our Old Testament. Here, context is key. Your textbook discusses context and interpretation just briefly, so here I'm supplementing your reading just a bit. I'd like to discuss first historical cultural context, and then literary context. By historical cultural context, I mean the context that involves the biblical writer, the biblical audience, and any other historical or cultural elements touched on by the text. Historical cultural context relates to just about anything outside the text that helps us to understand it. When it comes to the biblical writer, it's key to understand as much as we can about the writer's background. For example, as we move into the prophetic books, we learn that Amos prophesied in Israel, what was the northern kingdom at the time. But Amos was a farmer from the south, in Judah. Knowing this about him helps us to understand his prophetic ministry, especially in the north. It's also important to understand the biblical audience. Again, I have in mind the prophets. Most of you know Jeremiah 29:11, For I know the plans I have for you, plans to give you a hope and a future. These words form part of a letter that Jeremiah wrote to people already in exile, in captivity. The historical context then highlights the meaning of the verse, that in spite of everything gone wrong in Judah and Israel, God's final word is not judgment, but hope. Well, there are a handful of questions that we can ask to get at the historical cultural context. For example, who is the author? What was his background? When did he write? What was the nature of his ministry? What kind of relationship did he have with the audience? Why was he writing? Who was the biblical audience? What were their circumstances? How was their relationship to God? What kind of relationship did they have with each other? What was happening at the time the book was written? And are there any other historical cultural factors that might shed light on the book? The real question might be, how do you possibly answer all of these questions? And this is where study aids help tremendously. Bible handbooks, dictionaries, commentaries, lexicons. When you begin to work on your paper for this class, you'll be required to consult specific study aids. If you haven't done something like this already, I hope that the process of writing your paper will be a great introduction to utilizing Bible reference books and tools. Well, one additional component to historical cultural context is, of course, geography, and we'll look at this in detail next week. Moving on then to literary context. This refers to the context within the book. For example, the form a passage takes, the flow of an argument within a book, the meaning of the words in a sentence that surround a passage. Literary context also includes the study of genre. Genre refers to the types or categories of literature found in the Bible. For the Old Testament, this includes narrative, law, poetry, prophecy, and wisdom. Various genres evoke certain interpretive expectations from the reader. For instance, it would be dangerous, if not just confusing, to mistake a telephone directory with a love letter, or rather a menu for directions. So too, the genre of the biblical text shapes our approach and our expectations. Trying to understand the context of a biblical passage, a historical, cultural, literary, is something that I want to impress on you. Mostly because if you disregard the context of a passage, you can make it say just about anything you want. And this is dangerous. Cults are famous for twisting scripture, and most of their misreadings stem from skewing the context or even completely disregarding it. Well, these issues of context, historical, cultural, and literary, are part of an interpretive process called exegesis. The term refers to explanation or interpretation of a text. A similar term, referring to interpretation, is hermeneutic. All of us hold a distinct hermeneutic when it comes to interpreting the Bible, and our hermeneutics are often influenced by biases and assumptions that we bring to the text. These are presuppositions, our preconceived notions and understandings that we bring to the text before we actually study it. These may include experiences and previous encounters we've had with the Bible, those that make us assume that we already understand it. Other influences that may affect our hermeneutic, both good and bad, may include Sunday school, Christian music, movies. I'm thinking here of the famous Charlton Heston movie that always plays during Easter. A couple of other movies that come to mind include The Passion, The Da Vinci Code. 
The key is to be careful of allowing these external influences to formulate our understanding of the biblical text prior to really studying it. The hope is to be aware of our own hermeneutic and attempt to set aside what we can so that we can approach biblical study first. Well, there's one other interpretive component that will help us process our biblical material in this class, and that is the distinction between storyline and plotline. A storyline traces the content of a passage. It lets the reader know what happened. Plotline traces the message. It offers us an understanding of God in ourselves. This is the meatiness or the heart of the text. For example, let's think about the story of the Exodus, Israel brought out of Egypt. The storyline gives us the content, how many people, where they were, where they went, the Egyptians, etc. The plot line, in a broad sweeping stroke, informs us that Yahweh, our God, redeems. He rescues. Now this is the heart of the passage.